Today we are going to talk about body fluid compartments, right? Uh, body fluid compartments and body fluids are very important not only in physiology but also when you are managing your patients in the medical floors or when you are managing your patients on the surgical floors, right? You must know that what are the normal uh, types of fluids present in different body fluid compartments and in different diseases how the body fluid compartments are altered and how you can restore the balance of normal body fluid compartments right. So let's start with the very basic first of all you must know that the most abundant substance present in our body is water. We are made with lot of water thank God it's organized in proper biological way right about 60 percent of our body weight is water right. So let me tell you how body uh, how the water is distributed in different compartments in the body. First of all, all of you know that we are having lot of cells. We are made of cells, right? So let's put the put cells here. Right? Now, because this is your cells and here is suppose your circulatory system, circulatory system in which blood is circulating, right? Now, of course, all the reactions in the cells, many of the reactions they are going on in aqueous environment. So this is the amount of water which is present within the cells, right? This blue color is indicating the amount of water which is present intracellularly. Is that right? Now, all the water which is present within the cells, right? All the water which is present in within all the cells of the body put together, this is called intracellular fluid. So what is this fluid called? Yes please? Intracellular fluid. What is intracellular fluid? Intracellular, flu intracellular fluid compartment is the fluid compartment of the body, right, consisting of all the water present within the cell, right. Then around the cells there is water also. Water is present around the cell as well, right? In a way, cells are bathing in water. They are surrounded by water. Now, this green color is showing the water which is outside the cells and surrounding the cells, right? Now, this green color of the water is outside the cells, so we can call it extracellular water. Now this extracellular water which is present around the cells, right, this is not circulating. So this is the non-circulatory, non-circulating part of extracellular water. Then of course, water is also present in the plasma. Of course, blood has RBCs, it has red blood cells white blood cells and platelets. I'm just showing red blood cells. But this is, what is this? Plasma. Of course, it's water also, right? It, a major component of the plasma is water. Plasma is having lot of uh, substances, but most abundant component is water. Now, how many water compartments are there? First of all, intracellular fluid, then this green and this red, both of them are extracellular, they are outside the cells. Remember, the water which is present within the RBCs, within the red blood cell, this is intracellular. This water is intracellular. So in the blood, within the cells, red blood cells, 
white blood cells and platelets is intracellular but because blood cells are floating and circulating within the plasma uh, right present along with the plasma and the, all the water in the plasma is considered extra cellular right i think if i'm really intelligent so i should make this also which color green yeah i have some intelligent students so plasma should be made even though it's not green but just to make the concept more visually clear to your semi intelligent or intelligent mind i must say right so what we can see really here i think rbc is leaking it's very bad okay now what we see that blue is the intracellular fluid compartment and this green component around the cell and this green color are present within the vascular system but outside the blood cells this is plasma now plasma and this fluid both of them are extra cellular both of them are extra cellular right out of these extra cellular fluids this fluid which is specially present around the cells this component right this component this fluid is that part of the extra cellular fluid which is not circulating and plasma is that part of the extra cellular fluid which is circulating is that right so extra cellular fluid is two type non circulating extra cellular fluid which surrounds the cells and circulating extra cellular fluid which is present in the vascular system and lymphatic system right now this non circulating this non circulating extra cellular fluid which is surrounding the cells is called interstitial fluid what is it interstitial fluid and of course no fun in telling you people now what is this yes what is this plasma plasma interstitial fluid and intracellular fluid right in another way now let's make a very simplified diagram of the whole this situation if we make a simplified diagram let's put all the cells together if we put all the cells together and in this diagram we make a very big cell all cells put together and now yeah this diagram is representative of which fluid intracellular fluid this diagram is representative of intracellular fluid then outside it this is intracellular fluid of all body and now we can make you remember that communication the communication between the plasma and the interstitial fluid is the capillary wall and you must know that capillary wall are very very porous they allow the exchange of fluid and some other substances capillary walls through the capillary walls fluid in the plasma and interstitial fluid they are exchanged with each other is that right the real difference in plasma and the interstitial fluid is one difference i told you plasma is circulating interstitial fluid is not circulating plasma is present within the vascular system interstitial fluid is present around the cells plasma has lot of proteins interstitial fluid does not have that much protein conceptually speaking interstitial fluid is ultra filtrate of plasma that if you filter the plasma under pressure but don't allow the proteins to filter out then whatever will come out is interstitial fluid so interstitial fluid composition is very similar to plasma but minus plasma proteins and plasma protein associate bound substances because any substance which is bound with the plasma protein will not easily filter out here is that right so anyway now this is all intracellular fluid and this component is representing 
extracellular fluid. And this extracellular fluid has this component, what is this? Interstitial fluid, right? And what is here? I am not showing RBCs, but what is this? Plasma fluid, is that right? What is this? Plasma fluid, right? So in this way, here we can make a diagram that you understand from where this diagram came? It's clear to all of you. One thing is very important that primarily body fluids are divided into intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, right? So let me tell you that if we put all the total body water, all the total body water. So we say that let's suppose I put your total body weight first, total body weight. Out of the total body weight, how much is the total body water? Yes, it's approximately 60% and 40% is your dry weight, right? So what really happens, the total body water is about 60% of your total weight. Is that right? Of course, total body water will include intracellular fluid as well as extracellular fluid, all body water, right? But you have to remember one thing, young females have less water. Yeah, Ostok does not agree to me. Why you don't agree? I know there are reasons you don't agree, but still they are having less water than you. Why young females have less water? Carlos. Anyone? Yeah? He is saying something in his heart, I cannot understand. Anyone wise enough or intelligent enough? Boys should know the answer, they are so much interested in young females. Anyone knows why they have less water? Actually boys are perplexed, it's against their basic ideas. Look, the reason is that adipose tissue, fat tissue, it has less water. Look, if I draw a fat cell, Fat cell has a big fat droplet, it's a lipid droplet and there's very little water into it. Are you understanding? Females have more fat or males have, uh, generally speaking, or even though some obese male can beat the females in this matter, but still, uh, generally speaking, females have more fat or adipose tissue or males have? Males have more adipose tissue. What kind of females you have been coming across? Females have more adipose tissue, I must write it down in your book if you don't know by simple observation. Because females have more adipose tissue and in adipose tissue there is less water, so females and obese male even, they have less water. For example, a young female, little bit obese, she has 50% of body weight as water. But if you come across a male, male are usually having less adipose tissue and male who is thin, bony and skinny, not much adipose tissue, he may have 70% of the water. I am talking about which water? Total body water. Is that right? So remember that even though on average we say that in human beings 60% of the body weight is water but it varies from person to person, right? People who are Le, uh, males and especially thin, less adipose, they are having less adipose tissue, they are having more water. And females and especially who are obese, they are having less water. So let's go with general concept that a uh, standard person, I don't know what is meant by the standard person, but a standard person, a model person will have about 60% of total body water. Out of this, 60% right let me put it here that all this is total total body water right this consists of from here up to here all of this is total body water that include about 60 percent now Total body water is primarily divided into two compartments, intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, right? So we can say the total body water is divided into, yes, 
इंट्रा सेलर फ्लूड कंपार्टमेंट एंड एक्स्ट्रा सेलर फ्लूड कंपार्टमेंट इंट्रा सेलर एंड एक्स्ट्रा सेलर फ्लूड कंपार्टमेंट राइट नाउ यू सी इंट्रा सेलर कंपार्टमेंट इज लार्जर राइट आउट ऑफ दिस टोटल सिक्सटी परसेंट टू थर्ड इज इंट्रा सेलर एंड वन थर्ड इज एक्स्ट्रा सेलर इट मीन्स फोर्टी परसेंट इज आउट ऑफ द सिक्सटी परसेंट आउट ऑफ द टोटल लेसन हाउ मच वेट यू हैव लेट सपोज यू हैव हंड्रेड के जी इट्स एन अनयूजल वेट बट एनी वे सपोज यू आर हैविंग हंड्रेड के जी देन हाउ मच वॉटर यू हैव सिक्सटी आई थिंक लेटर नॉट के जी लेटर right out of the 60 liter 40 liter will be intracellular fluid and 20 liter will be yes 20 liter is extracellular fluid is that right now it's 20% as well now out of this you again divide extracellular fluid into two areas what are the two areas extra cell of fluid yes what is this inter stitial fluid and plasma right interstitial fluid that makes about out of extra cell of fluid interstitial fluid is 3/4 and plasma is about 1/4 of that is that right no problem up to this right having said all of this now i will talk about little bit about the composition of the different fluid compartment important cations that is positively charged substances and anions in different compartment now the most important cations within the cells intracellularly are yes please potassium and magnesium not sodium sodium is not the major intracellular cations remember cells are just the bags of potassium floating into extracellular fluid which is the ocean of sodium you must remember you remember by evolution you have heard of word evolution evolution yes according to darwin or evolution concepts life started from ocean life started from ocean so when life started with simple molecules and then eventually converted into cell and then it came to the land is that right when life came to the land basically all metabolic activities and survival of the cell was designed to survive well in the ocean environment and you know ocean fluid is very rich in sodium. sodium and chloride all of you must have tasted ocean and tears right so what happens that because life started in the ocean and primitive cells very early cells our great 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 ancestors right they were well designed biologically to be active and survive in the sodium rich ocean water when they came to the surface they brought the ocean water with them you know our extra cellular fluid is very rich sodium and chloride it is just like a small ocean environment surrounding every cell look at the intelligence of the system right that when cell came to the land and then many cells further evolved and multicellular organism come one of this organism is carlos now carlos has so many cells but every cell is still having extra cellular fluid around it which is very rich in sodium and chloride so whenever we talk about sodium chloride we must remember it is the major solute solute in extra cellular fluid not intracellular fluid am i clear so cells are rich in not in sodium and chloride they are rich in potassium and magnesium as their cations 
and major anions in the cells are yes in the cells what are the major negatively charged proteins intracellular proteins they are negatively charged even plasma proteins are also negatively charged at physiological pH plus in the cells the very important organic compounds what are organic compounds yes what are organic compounds please tell me ATP adenosine triphosphate yes we also call these, these organic compounds which are having phosphate we call it organic phosphates okay for your easiness I put it here organic phosphates what are the intracellular organic phosphates adenosine triphosphate adenosine diphosphate adenosine monophosphate right and of course phosphates are positively charged or negatively charged negatively charged so within the cell the major positive charges are present on potassium and magnesium major negative charges are present in organic phosphates like ATP, ADP and AMP and of course on proteins. So we can say intracellular fluid is a soup of potassium magnesium with a lot of organic phosphates and proteins. Is that right? And of course there is no fun in memorizing it that this cell should be surrounded by extracellular fluid which is rich in sodium and chloride right so I will put here which is the major cation here sodium either the sodium is complex with chloride mostly or to some degree to bicarb sodium and chloride and what is the major anion here again it is sodium sorry cation the sodium and negative charges here are mainly by the chloride and bicarb but you have to remember there are lot more proteins present in what is this plasma they are also negatively charged right so what we really see that intracellular fluid has potassium and magnesium as major cations and organic phosphates and intracellular proteins as major anions and in extracellular fluid sodium chloride and sodium bicarb they are making major solutes sodium being cation chloride and bicarb as extracellular anions and in the plasma there are also plasma proteins which are negatively charged one thing which you should remember that biological partition between the plasma and the interstitial fluid is capillary membrane and capillary membrane is very permeable and it does not offer any barrier to the movement of sodium and chloride. Listen carefully, it's very very important. Sodium and chloride, right, is separated from plasma and interstitial fluid by capillary membrane. But capillary membrane does not offer any resistance to the movement of sodium and chloride. It's highly porous. What does it mean? that sodium chloride concentration will be always equal almost equal in plasma and interstitial fluid because sodium chloride freely equilibrate is that right but you have to remember here the partition is what is this partition yes please cell membrane cell membrane does not allow the sodium chloride to move freely look the sodium want to go in but it will, cannot enter in coming bouncing back this is very important concept you are understanding why it is so important yes why it is so important to know it it's a very important concept Dr. Najib gets mad over this concept that sodium is major extracellular solute along with the chloride and bicarb and it does not freely move in and out of the cell and extracellular fluid why it is so important to know anyone we are all doctors all our life will be giving the sodium and chloride to the uh, what is this patients 
normal saline. In many diseases, we lose sodium and chloride. Why this concept is so important? It's a very basic thing, my friends. Attention, please, before you tell me something funny. Listen. If sodium cannot, look, sodium cannot move in and out between extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid. And as I told you, but sodium can freely equilibrate between, what is this? Interstitial and blood. Now listen, just put a simple concept. The amount of water present in any compartment is proportionate to the number of osmotically active particles. You know, fluid always follow the, fluid always follow the solutes. You don't know this thing. You don't know this thing. Fluid in the compartments, wherever you put the more solute, fluid will love to be with solutes. Is that right? Now imagine, I put lot of sodium chloride here. Suppose I put a intravenous infusion or lot of sodium chloride, very heavy concentration of sodium chloride. Or I gift you a potato, potato chips bag. You know potato chips? You must keep on eating. So potato chips bag, if you eat a lot, they have lot of salt. So lot of salt will go here from GIT. So salt is added to extracellular fluid. Now, if a lot of sodium chloride come here, I put a lot of sodium chloride in extracellular compartment. Can sodium chloride enter into cells? No. When sodium chloride cannot enter into the cell, it will concentrate outside. Outside in extracellular environment, osmotically active particles will be less or more. When I put more sodium chloride here, osmotically active particles will be less or more. More. So it will become hyper osmolar. If, if I put lot, I give you lot of sodium chloride tablets to eat you. Or if I'm good to you, I give you salty potato chips. Lot of sodium will come here. Problem is that from GIT, potato chip sodium will go into blood and extracellular fluid, but it cannot enter into cells. So blood will become less salty or more salty? More salty. Isn't it hyper or smaller? When it will become hyper or smaller, so solute concentration in extracellular compartment will go up as compared to the solute concentration in intracellular compartment. What will happen now? Solute drag the water. If sodium chloride cannot go here, the sodium chloride will increase the osmotic pressure here and water will be sucked from intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment. Why? Because when you are adding solutes here, right? First lesson, before adding the sodium chloride in a normal healthy person, even though here is sodium main, sodium and chloride and sodium bicarbonate major solutes and here is potassium, magnesium and protein, then these are organic phosphate are major solute. But in a healthy person, intracellular osmolarity and extracellular osmolarity are absolutely equal. In a healthy person, in equilibrium state, number of osmotically active particles in extracellular fluid and number of osmotically active particles in intracellular fluid are absolutely equal. Even though type of the solute is different, but number of solute particles which are osmotically active normally extracellularly and intracellularly are different and both of them are holding their water faithful to them. But when you add sodium chloride here by potato chips or by eating lot of sodium chloride tablets, this area become hyper osmolar. Its osmolality become more than the normal osmolarity. When the osmolarity in this area become more than the normal osmolarity, you know what is the normal osmolarity first of all? Anyone? Look, if we put all the solute, solutes, osmotic osmolarity together, it is about to be very exact, it is 290 milli osmol per liter. Let me tell you what is meant by this. If you take one liter of extracellular fluid, if you take one liter of extracellular fluid, 
then all the cations and anions together which are present here all the cations and anions together they produce osmotic power the power to hold the water is about 290 milli osmol per liter right of course main contribution it's done in excess of fluid by sodium and chloride but there are other cations and anions in smaller amount there's calcium magnesium there are many others so all of the osmotically active particles present in extracellular fluid right their osmotic power the power to hold the water put together is how much 290 milli small per liter but in most of the books we make a round figure and we say it normal is about 300 milli small per liter but this is to be very exact if you want to be extremely exact it is 287 but don't be like that just remember that 300 is 300 milli small is the osmolarity of extracellular fluid Remember, if you have pure water, pure water, what is the osmolarity? What is the osmolarity of pure water? Yes, Ostok, zero. Oh, my friends, I need to really teach properly. I should not get lazy as a teacher. Look, this is a water container. And here I put up. Yes, yes, yes. In this water container, I put here semi permeable membrane right look this is a membrane and on both side there is water there is water here and there is water here this is compartment a this is compartment b now listen carefully if both compartment have pure water 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 is, allow, is allowed to move through this membrane so water will equally move on both side and water level on both side will be equal now you do something clever you start adding sodium chloride here what are these particles sodium chloride what will happen solute pull the fluid or we can say this area will develop osmolarity now a compartment will have more osmolarity than b compartment what is osmolarity osmolarity is determined by the number of the osmotically active particles in a fluid is that right now listen attention please there are two ways to explain this situation one situation is this is hyper osmolar fluid in a compartment b compartment is less osmolar so water will move from which direction to which direction from b to a water will move from b to a one there are two ways to explain it one way to explain this phenomenon is that because A has more solute and solute can attract the particles. Is that right? When we put the solute particles into A container, this membrane does not allow the solute to move in this direction. Ideally, solute should move and it should go to both directions. But because this membrane does not allow, what? It does not allow the movement of solute okay let me make it easy solutes are like beautiful young girls and water is like boys you know water follows now what happens if you add lot of young girls here and no girl is allowed to come here what will happen to boys here they will start moving in that direction is it difficult to understand it's so simple common experience so when you add girls or solute here they develop osmotic pressure right and what really happens that solute attract water solute is not allowed to go to b compartment but water is allowed to move from b to a so water will start moving in that direction so after some time you will find that water level here has become less and water level there has gone up is that right solute has dragged the water this is one way to explain Another way to explain is that when you put the solute here, then water concentration on this side become less and water concentration on this side is high. Because before putting the solute, water molecule concentration in B, B compartment and A compartment was equal. But when you add solute here, 
then water become less concentrated on this side and it, it is remains well concentrated on this side. And everyone knows if molecules are allowed to move, they move from high concentration to low concentration. So actually water will move from high concentration to low concentration. This is two ways to explain. One way is that water moves every substance, every molecule which is allowed to move will move from high concentration to low concentration, right? Not only solute, even solvent also, even solvent, solvent is water. Now again, when we put more sodium chloride here, we make this area hyper or smaller because solutes are more or we make this water less concentrated. So water from high concentration will move to low concentration. This is one explanation. Other explanation is simple concept that whenever there are more solute in one side of the container and if solutes are not allowed to equilibrate, then area which is having more solute and which is hyper or smaller will drag the water to that side. Am I clear? Now listen, what is the concept of osmotic pressure? From where the pressure come into this? Let me tell you. You added solute here. Water is now coming to this and trying to raise the pressure in this compartment. You know when more water is coming here, right? What you do? You put a piston here. You know, pressure device. Now, the amount of pressure which you are supposed to apply to prevent the movement of water is called osmotic pressure. Because listen again carefully. What did we do? Initially there were pure water on both sides. No move, net movement. Right? We added solute here. It become hyper or smaller. Water started moving from B to A. If we want to prevent the movement of water from B to A, we have to apply some pressure in the A compartment. That pressure is the amount of pressure required to prevent the movement of water from hyposmolar to hyperosmolar fluid, that pressure is equal to the pressure with which water is trying to move. That pressure is called osmotic pressure. That pressure was originally generated by these solute particles. That was called osmotic pressure. So when water was moving from B to A compartment, what is that? Water is moving under the influence of osmotic pressure of hyper or smaller fluid in A compartment. Now listen carefully. If we keep on adding more and more salt here, if we keep on adding more and more salt here, A solution will keep on getting more and more hyper or smaller and fluid from B will keep on moving on the A side. Now let's suppose we remove this. We have added sodium chloride, water has gone there, here water level has gone up. Now we do another trick. We add another solute here. But osmotically, look, osmotically active particle now in the B area is equal to the A area. What will happen now? Water will start coming back until both sides become equal. You are intelligent, only you don't tell people. Right, now you see under these circumstances, what will happen? Water on both sides will become equal. Now imagine, in any side, you add more osmotically active particles. Water will start moving in that direction. Is that right? Suppose this is another solute. If I add this solute more to this side, water will move to that side. But rather than A compartment, the same particle that move on, move on this side and it become hyper or smaller, water will move in this direction. Are you understanding? So water is like boys follows the girls or we can say that water in different compartment if right will follow what? Solutes. Is that right? Those solutes which cannot move across the membrane. Am I right? Now come back to this diagram because this is going to be our master diagram. We were talking about potato chips, don't forget them. You have eaten a lot of potato chips lot of sodium chloride is added to the here. Now sodium chloride can freely move in between plasma and interstitial fluid. So whatever added, added sodium chloride is there that will be equally equilibrated in these two compartment. What is that? Plasma compartment and 
interstitial compartment. So we can say by eating potato chips, we have added more salt in extracellular fluid. But this salt, added salt, when it try to go into cell, can it go? No. So newly added sodium chloride is added to this compartment. Now this compartment will have what? Higher osmolality. When you eat lot of potato chips, which are very salty, or you take lot of sodium chloride tablets, actually you are adding lot of sodium chloride part, molecule, the solute particles into extracellular fluid and extracellular fluid become hyper or smaller. Its osmolality will become more than 300. Now, when it become hyper or smaller, water concentration is more here and less here. Or solute are here to drag the water and water can move through the membrane. So what will happen? Boys will start escaping to there. So intracellular compartment will start shrinking, not boys, I think water. So what will happen? Intracellular water will start moving towards extracellular compartment. Cells will start shrinking. Intracellular compartment will start shrinking. And extravascular compartment, oh, extracellular. Intracellular compartment will start shrinking. And extracellular compartment will start expanding. There will be extracellular fluid compartment expansion. Are you understanding me? And fluid will keep on moving, keep on moving until osmolarity on both sides again become equal. How? When this water will keep on moving from here to here, it will start getting dilute and this will start getting concentrated. Originally, before giving the sodium chloride, osmolarity here was 300 and it was also 300. When you added the sodium here, it becomes 320. Then what will start moving there? Water. When water will be coming here, it will get little bit diluted and it will become 310. And it will get little bit concentrated, it will also become 310. At 310, when osmolarity will become equal on both sides, net movement of water will stop. So what has happened? That water shift has been there to equalize the extracellular fluid osmolarity and intracellular fluid osmolarity. Am I clear? No problem into this. Let's do another experiment. Forget about this. Let's suppose, now you people have to tell me. Let's suppose, should I remove all these things? so that you can see it more clearly. At least this funny. Okay, I'll make it more clear. And of course, you should not forget a part of it is, extracellular fluid is divided into plasma and interstitial fluid. And there's no fun in telling you again that this is rich in sodium and chloride and bicarb. Is that right? All of this. And this is rich in, yes, hurry up, potassium, magnesium, and yes, uh, organic phosphates, organic phosphates and proteins, right, proteins are also present here. Previous experiment was we are added the sodium chloride here, made it hyper or smaller, water shifted from intracellular compartment to extracellular compartment, intracellular compartment sh shrink extracellular compartment expand until osmolarity of intracellular and extracellular compartment again becomes equal. It achieves a steady state. Now do another thing. Again, to baseline is, what is the osmolarity here? 300 and what is here? 300. Now you do a trick. Let us suppose you are suffering from a disease or some condition in which water is lost from here. Less solute are lost and more water is lost. For example, when you have high grade fever, when you are having fever, water is evaporating from respiratory system and also from the skin. Water is leaving. So this water during fever, when water is evaporating, do you think salt, sodium chloride is also evaporating? No. Do you think tablets of sodium chloride will go out of the body? No. So water is evaporating during fever, high grade prolonged fever, what is happening? That this compartment is shrinking. Is that right? 
extra cellular compartment is shrinking and its solute will remain the same but amount of water will come less so it will become concentrated so its osmolality will become 320 this is another situation I'm telling you what is being lost from here water when water is being lost from here it becomes what highly concentrated osmolarity here increases again what will happen this hyperosmolar extra cell of fluid which has lost the water more water and less solute this osmolality is more than the osmolarity of intracellular fluid and what will happen again water will start shifting again so it will keep on shifting until it become little bit diluted and it become little bit concentrated until due to arrival of the water it dropped to from 320 to 310 and it become concentrated it also become 310 a new steady state is achieved am i right another experiment let's suppose we have a bet with carlos i say carlos i will give you him one dollar if you take 10 liter of water he drinks it's an ethical to offer this type of things or at least you should get more than one dollar but still i offer him one dominican dollar Dominican dollar if he if he drinks 10 liter of water and I don't know somehow he gets interested into this start drinking ta uh, tap water pure water without any solutes now he is drinking water 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 what is being added here now yes my friends yes water extracellular fluid become more watery right he is taking water without solute, water is absorbing from GIT and going to his extra cell fluid. After about 2 liter, 3 liter, he say I don't want to have. Continue, it's okay. But still, he has added lot of what? Water here. Now, it will become diluted or concentrated? Diluted. When it will get diluted, right, what will happen? That osmolarity which was previously 300, now it has dropped to, let's suppose, 280. Now, under these circumstances, when extracellular fluid osmolarity has dropped from 300 to 280, but intracellular fluid osmolarity is the initially same 300, now which fluid is hyperosmolar? Interest, intracellular or extracellular? X, yeah? Intracellular is hyperosmolar. More solute here, so it will suck the water from which direction? From? Water will move from? extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid extracellular fluid will start shrinking intracellular fluid compartment will start expanding until when it will shrink it will go to maybe 290 and because it is getting the water it also it gets little bit diluted and it becomes also 290 when both of the, them become what equilibrated right the net movement of the water will stop so what we are seeing that when we change the remember basic concept normally in steady state intracellular fluid osmolarity and extracellular fluid osmolarity are absolutely equal when you disturb osmolarity on one side that will make the water shift in between the compartment so that again a steady state should be achieved in which osmolarity intracellular and extracellular should become what equal is that right so whenever you will make extracellular fluid hyperosmolar it will suck the water from intracellular to extracellular if due to some disease process if you make extracellular fluid hyposmolar less or smaller then water will be sucked by the intracellular compartment from the extracellular so i just say something now i'm going to put a question there is a person who has a, some disease process going on and due to that disease process extracellular fluid become hyper or smaller what will be the shift of the water from if extracellular fluid has hyper or smaller what will be the shift of the water from intracellular to extracellular now there is another patient who has a disease in which 
एक्स्ट्रा सेल ऑफ फ्लूड बिकम यस हाइपोस्मोलर नाउ फ्लूड विल शिफ्ट फ्रॉम इंट्रा सेल टू यू आर इंटेलिजेंट गुड एक्सलेंट सो यू नो एट दैट वेन इट बिकम हाइपोस्मोलर वॉटर विल मूव टू द हाइपरोस्मोलर साइड इज दट राइट नाउ लेट मी टेल यू सम इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग लेट सपोज आई एड through this lesson through this intravenous line i add sodium chloride solution and this sodium chloride solution sodium chloride solution is called saline what is it called saline saline, saline solution no lesson if you have pure water let's suppose i have a pure water in this container pure water has no osmolality it doesn't have any osmolar power now i want that this pure water should have same osmolarity it should have same osmolarity as my extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid normally my extracellular and intracellular fluid have how much osmolarity 300 300 so if i want that this pure water should have the same osmolarity as as my body fluid then i add what is it sodium chloride into it what am i adding sodium chloride into it when i add sodium chloride into it it will become more and more or smaller until a time will come that so much sodium chloride is added that this water also become 300 milli or smaller per liter is that right when so much sodium chloride is added that this water become have the same osmolarity as my body fluids i will say this saline is isoosmotic iso means same it has the same osmotic power as my water compartment fluid compartment so what is isoosmotic saline saline which is having so much sodium chloride that its osmotic power is equal to about 300 milli osmol is that right we also call it isotonic what we call it isotonic saline so what is isotonic saline isotonic saline is that sodium chloride solution in which so much amount of sodium chloride is present which is able to exert a smaller pressure of about 300 milli osmol this is isotonic or isosmotic am i clear how much sodium you need to add here now this is the question how much sodium you are supposed to add the amount of sodium to be added to 1 liter of water to make it iso osmolar with our body fluid is the amount of sodium is 150 millimole so what does it mean that if you take in one spoon you know spoon you eat kuchara okay spoon in one spoon if you take what 150 millimole of sodium chloride is that right a milli right and add to 1 liter pure water this will make the solution isotonic is that right this is the relationship between the amount of sodium and osmolar power now another thing if i rather than 150 i add only 75 millimole of sodium chloride then osmolar power here will be 150 do you think now it is as osmolar as body fluid no it is called it is having half osmolarity than body fluid that osmotically active particles in this solution when 5 milli mole of sodium is chloride is added osmotically active particles in this solution are half than the osmotically active particles in our extracellular and intracellular fluid so this will be called half saline the term which is used here is half saline and this half saline is isotonic hypotonic or hypertonic hypotonic it has tone less than the normal body fluids is that right now imagine if i add too much salt let us suppose i add 
if one spoon, if one spores, one spoon is 150 millimole. If one spoon full of 150 millimole of sodium chloride added to one liter, we make the solution, we make the saline isotonic. If we add half spoon, it is hypertonic saline. And if we add two spoon, it is hypertonic. Do you really understand? Now look on the experiment. I don't know, I love to teach. I should have to do something about this love. Listen carefully. Now we have three containers. We have, okay, three intravenous IV infusion bags. Right? Here it is, yes. Here it is normal saline. Normal saline. You understand it? It's osmotic. Osmolarity is 300 milliosmol and amount of sodium added is 150 millimole per liter of course. Are you understanding? This is hypo, okay. And of course this should be called, normal saline should be called isotonic. Is that right? This is having less sodium chloride. So what is this? Hypotonic. Let's suppose here the osmolarity was 300 milli osmol per liter. Here it is 150 milli, yes, osmol per liter. So it is half normal saline. And here we have added too much salt, it becomes hyper, yes, tonic. Let's suppose in this solution, sodium chloride is 600 milli osmol per liter. Is that right? It is double saline. Now imagine what really happens when one of these is give, uh, given to a person. This is your drip number, intravenous infusion number 1, 2, 3. Let's suppose if we connect this to this person, there is a stopper here. We open the stopper. If this fluid is going here, we are adding to intravenous line and from it will add first to the blood. You know sodium chloride solution will come to the blood. But because sodium and chloride equilibrate to both sides, so eventually sodium chloride concentration in interstitial fluid and plasma will be the same. So we say truly this solute and water is added to both sides to the extracellular fluid. When this will come, okay, he says that this experiment should be told after the break. Let's have a break. Uh, let's continue our discussion about the body fluids compartment. So we were talking about that here is the intracellular compartment which is of the fluid which is surrounded by the cell membranes, right? And here is the extracellular compartment which consists of interstitial fluid and plasma. But interstitial fluid and plasma except the plasma proteins and cells present in the blood, other component can easily exchange in between the interstitial fluid and the plasma. Now, as I told you previously, the normal osmolarity of the plasma is 300. Osmolarity of interstitial fluid is also 300. So we can say osmolarity of extracellular fluid is 300. In normal, healthy, steady state situation, osmolarity of intracellular fluid is also 300 milli or small per liter, right? Now, we have prepared three saline solution that in the water we have added the sodium chloride. In this container number B, we have added water with 150 millimole of sodium chloride. When one liter of water is added 150 millimole of sodium chloride, so naturally, sodium chloride dissociate into sodium and chloride. So both of them exert the osmotic pressure and osmolality of, osmolarity of this fluid becomes 300 milliosmol. And when a saline solution has osmolarity of 300 milliosmol, it has the same osmolarity as our body fluids. So we say such saline solution is isotonic with our body solutions. But 
let's suppose rather we add to container A half amount of the sodium chloride then osmolarity of this solution is 150 milliosmol which is half than the normal saline. So such solution can be called half normal saline or because this saline solution has less amount of sodium chloride so it is less having less osmotically active particles as compared to the normal saline or as compared to our body fluid osmolarity. So we can say solution A is hypotonic saline. Then we can prepare one more solution or saline solution in which we add too much sodium chloride and we keep on adding sodium chloride until osmolarity of this solution becomes 600 milliosmol per liter. Now this solution in the C container is having double osmol osmolarity as compared to our body fluids. So we say this is a hypertonic saline. Have you understood well these three solutions? Now let's come back to this diagram. In this diagram on x axis I'm showing the volumes and on y axis I'm showing the osmolarity. Now osmolarity here is 300 milli or small. For example if solution had 100 milli or small it will be here, 200 milli or small here, 300 here, suppose 400 here. So whenever our body fluid has increased osmolarity it will move towards above the 300. Whenever body fluid has less osmolarity this is our central point normal it will move downward. Whenever volume will expand it will move on these sides right extracellular volume if it expands it will move on this side. If intracellular volume expand this is the central point intracellular fluid expand it will move to this side is that right. So again the volume is on the x axis the central point is here and whenever extracellular volume expand this is moving away from the central point right and if extracellular volume shrink it will move in this direction. When we talk about intracellular fluid compartment when intracellular fluid compartment expand it will move away from central but when uh, intracellular fluid compartment will shrink it will move towards the central point. Am I clear? Now we start our experiment. It's very simple. Let us suppose we start adding fluid number 1. Now, now fluid A is hypotonic saline. It has less sodium chloride as compared to our body osmotic power. Now when this solution let's suppose we open this stopper and we have closed these. If this solution is coming here now this drop of fluid which is coming here it is having how much osmolarity 150 it has less osmotic power. So as this fluid will keep on adding initially it will add, add into blood compartment but because sodium chloride and fluid can freely move between the plasma and the interstitial fluid. So eventually this fluid which is coming from container number A it will distribute and equilibrate and between the whole extracellular fluid. But when sodium you know can sodium go in? No. So all the sodium which is coming with this sodium chloride it will and this normal saline it will be added to extracellular fluid. So first event the first event is the change and the first change in the extracellular fluid is that hypotonic solution is coming. When hypotonic solution is coming osmolarity of this fluid will go up or down. It's very simple. Before this fluid came what was the osmolarity here? 300. Okay. Both of them have osmolarity of 300. When this fluid came what is the osmolarity of this fluid? 150. So when both of them will mix osmolarity will go up or down? It will go down. You are not understanding me. It's like that that you have a very very salty water and to very salty water you add less salty water and combination will have osmolarity less. Am I right? So when A solution is added to extracellular fluid the total osmolarity of this fluid will drop. Total osmolarity will drop. When osmolarity will drop under these circumstances the second 
important point is we have to look at what happens to fluid shift again what is happening that hypotonic solution is adding which is a hypoosmolar so normo osmolar extracellular fluid is mixing with hypoosmolar intravenous fluid and its osmolality is becoming less so extracellular fluid become hypoosmolar when it become hypoosmolar the osmolality, osmolality of extracellular fluid will go down right so rather than here it will become let's suppose here is that right now what will happen that when it become hypoosmolar right water will move in which direction in between these two compartments it will move from hypoosmolar to normoosmolar which is relatively hyper so water will start moving in this direction when water will start moving in this direction what will happen to this area it will become also hyposmolar it was 300 its osmolality will also start coming down let us suppose its osmolality was 280 when we added here first change but when water will start moving here it will start coming down it will become 290 and its osmolality will go a little bit up maybe it also become 290 because water is leaving so until both of them equilibrate then shift of the water will stop but during this process what has happened that what is this compartment what is this compartment intracellular intracellular compartment osmolality went down so we can say not osmolality is not at this level this osmolality has become less so when we added hypotonic solution to the extracellular environment osmolality of extracellular compartment dropped is that right then water from high concentration move to the low concentration you are telling me right from high concentration to lower concentration or from low smaller area to high smaller area and then this also become diluted right and here also intracellular osmolality also drop but what really happens to the volume of intracellular compartment what happens to the volume of intracellular compartment this will expand in this direction so it will become like this am i clear that volume of intracellular compartment will increase and volume of extracellular already increased because water came water and solute both came is that right so net result will be let me make the diagram here this was the original situation when you added hypotonic solution now the new situation is when you added hypotonic osmolality went down here it came down and then when water shifted here also osmolality became down and this expanded to that side and because water has also come here all the water which came here some of it has gone here some is left here so it also expand to this side are you understanding so what happened we say intra initially in three step understand in three step number one what initially happened to extracellular fluid the hypotonic solution came and osmolality of this solution went down when it become hyposmolar right then water started shifting from the extracellular compartment to intracellular compartment this is the second shift right with that it will water will keep on shifting until both osmolality become equal so both of them become less than normal but total amount of water which was added here total amount of water which was added here some of them remain here and some of the water has gone here so both compartment expand am i clear no problem into this okay now we do another experiment in this experiment we never give the solution to the patient now this is the another solution or uh, and now we are going to use the solution number b right we are going to see what happened there we go back to our normal diagram now we are adding which solution solution number b when solution number b is going okay i will make a small diagram here
सोल्यूशन नंबर बी इज एडिंग हेयर नाउ द ड्रॉप ऑफ वॉटर इज कमिंग फ्रॉम से लाइन नाउ दिस सोल्यूशन हैज सेम ऑस्मोलैरिटी विच इज द ऑस्मोलैरिटी ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर फ्लोइड आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेन आइसोटोनिक फ्लोइड आइसोटोनिक फ्लूड इज एडिड टू वॉट एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर फ्लोइड विल ऑस्मोलैरिटी चेंज विल द ऑस्मोलैरिटी चेंज नो ऑस्मोलैरिटी ऑफ दिस विल स्टिल रिमेन थ्री हंड्रेड बिकॉज द सोल्यूशन विद ऑस्मोलैरिटी ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड हैज बीन रिसीविंग अनदर अमाउंट ऑफ सोल्यूशन विद द सेम ऑस्मोलैरिटी सो टोटल फ्लूड विच इज मिक्सचर ऑफ एक्सा सोलर फ्लूड प्लस एडिड नॉर्मल से लाइन टोटल फ्लूड विल है ऑस्मोलैरिटी ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड इज दैट राइट बिकॉज आफ्टर द बी सोल्यूशन इज कमिंग हेयर Osmolarity does not change in extra cellular fluid. Do you think there will be any shift of the fluid? There will be any shift of the fluid between intracellular and extracellular? No, because shift of the fluid is controlled by osmolarity. Because when you add B solution here, right, and osmolarity of extracellular fluid and B B saline is the same, normal saline osmolarity. Isotonic fluids osmolarity and extracellular fluid fluid is is same, so so there no change in osmolarity of this. So it remain at its normal position this time, right? Because osmolarity does not change, so it will not allow any movement of the water across the membrane. But this sodium chloride is coming along with the water, but this solute stay here along with this. One liter of whatever amount of the water is coming, that is added only to the extra cellular compartment so under these circumstances what really happens that it expand look what is this osmolality remain the same right there is no change in what intra cellular compartment but in extra cellular compartment because we have added this fluid so it will expand in this direction so what is happening whenever you give isotonic fluid to the body whenever you add isotonic fluid to extra cellular compartment right isotonic fluid isotonic saline what really happens that solute and incoming water add to extra cellular compartment and expand the extra cellular compartment but because the smolality of extracellular compartment does not change so there is no shift of the fluid between extracellular compartment and intracellular compartment am i clear no problem into this another thing i did not mention about the rbc about red blood cell the osmolarity of the fluid within the red blood cell is also 300 you know red blood cells are also like cells and osmolarity of intracellular fluid of red blood cell is how much 300 because fluid which is coming here this fluid has also 300 the fluid which is added it has osmolarity of 300 extracellular fluid has also 300 this is also 300 do you think red cell will shrink or expand no because this fluid which is coming here it is not changing the it is not changing the osmolarity of the plasma because it is not changing the osmolarity of the plasma so plasma osmolarity remain 300 and intra rbc osmolarity is also 300 so there is no change of the exchange of the fluid a shift of the fluid between the rbc and the plasma or will there be any no so these cells will not shrink and not expand is that right but in previous experiment we said that hypotonic solution was coming in previous experiment so we were making the solution hypotonic when the solution become hypotonic you remember in previous experiment we said fluid will shift from extracellular to cellular compartment fluid will also shift in hypotonic situation to the rbcs also and rbcs will swell up in previous situation our water will enter into rbcs in previous if this container is working these two are not working it is becoming hyper hyposmolar if this solution is coming and this is becoming to suppose this become 290 and of course water has shifted here and this also become 290 or less and because it is 300 so water will shift in so to make it also 290 and rbc will swell up are you understanding 
So what really happens when RBCs are suspended in isotonic solution? If RBCs are present with this solution, no change in RBC volume. In RBCs are suspended in this solution, what will happen to RBC? They will absorb the water and swell up. And if RBCs are suspended in this solution, water will go from the RBCs to the hypertonic solution. You are understanding? And RBCs will shrink. Am I clear? Really? Now you, this, now we come to the third situation. Let's suppose we come to the third situation. Now everything is again normal. Again we make everything normal, right? And we do one thing. Now these two solutions are not moving. And all compartment are with normal volume and normal osmolarity. And to this person now, we are adding solution number C. When C solution is going, what we are doing? Hypertonic saline, hyperosmolar fluid is mix, mixing with extracellular fluid. Can sodium, now the fluid which is coming with this, this is highly concentrated, hyperosmolar. Is that right? Now this fluid which is coming here, do you think it's sodium and chloride can go into cells? No. So whatever sodium chloride is coming here, now in a way we can say when this solution is coming, we say solutes are coming more and water is coming less. It's a concentrated. In this case, solute and water were coming with the same ratio as body fluid. In this case, solute were coming less and water was coming more. Is that right? But again now this. In this case, there are too many solute. It is hyperosmolar solution. When hyperosmolar solutions are mixing with normal smolar extracellular fluid, the total osmolarity will go up. In this case, first event is when hyperosmolar solution is coming to extracellular compartment and sodium chloride or the solute cannot equilibrate with the intracellular compartment, it will become what? Hyper osmolar, osmolarity will move up. When it will become hyper osmolar, when it will become hyper osmolar, what will happen to the, what is this, this fluid? This will move from intracellular compartment to extracellular compartment and its osmolarity will start going up. So this volume will move to this direction. So what will happen? It will become like this. You know, that intracellular compartment fluid is shifting to the extracellular because it is having more osmotically active particles. So it sucks the fluid from intracellular to extracellular. Right? Until it goes up and this was already, it was very high. Let's suppose it has gone to 360 after the this solution. And it is the osmolality of 360, here it was 300. So water start moving in that direction until it becomes suppose 320 and this also drop to 320. So both of them are having high osmolarity of 320, right? And because fluid has shifted to that direction, so what has happened? Intracellular compartment has shrunken, but extracellular compartment has flu got fluid from the solution as well as from this side. So its fluid will increase. So it will shift like this. So in this new diagram, what is this showing the dotted lines that extracellular flu fluid osmolarity has gone up plus extracellular fluid, what volume has gone up. Intracellular fluid osmolarity has gone up but volume has gone down. Am I clear? Is it really clear? Right. If all these things are clear, then we can move forward to certain clinical situation. Let's have a break for five minutes. Now we will discuss the volume changes and osmolarity changes in our body fluid compartments when there are some physiological disturbances, right? That how different physiological disturbances alter the volume changes and osmolarity changes in our body fluid compartment. But before really I go for that, I will explain few terms which are very commonly used, right? Again, let's go back to our basic diagram. 
right this is total body fluid this one is intracellular fluid here it is extracellular fluid having the blood here and interstitial fluid here and this is the axis for osmolarity and from here we are talking about volume is that right now few terms which i will explain number 1 in the medical literature when we talk about that volume of a particular compartment depends on which factor what will be your answer the total volume of fluid in a specific body fluid compartment mainly depend mainly depend on which factor it depends on the solutes it depends on the osmotically active solute particles that's it the single answer next time again the volume of a suppose extracellular fluid volume depends on which factor that depends on the solute particles if solute particles become more volume will become more if solute particles become less volume will become less so principle number 1 principle number 1 is that volume of body fluid compartment mainly depends on yes osmotically active osmotically yes active solute particles and you have to remember the most important solute particles in extracellular fluid is sodium chloride that's it principle number 2 principle number 2 is what is meant by osmolarity because presence of solute particles make the fluid the presence of solute particles in a fluid determine the osmolarity of the fluid so what is meant by osmolarity yes what is your concept of osmolarity the number of number of osmotically active particle in a solution are expressed in term of osmolarity when we say that osmotically active particle in a solution are going up it mean osmolarity is going up and if number of osmotically active particle in a solution are becoming less so we say fluid osmolarity is becoming less so what is osmolarity we can say that concentration of osmotically active particle is expressed as units of osmolarity and what are the units of osmolarity in the body we use the units are milli osmol per liter now what is the difference in osmolarity and osmolality yes what is the difference between osmolarity and osmo lality yeah of course one difference is spellings what are the differences yes anyone anyone it's very simple it is the osmotically active particle per liter and this is osmotically active particle per kg kilogram that's it right so what is there that for example if i say that our body fluids have 300 milli osmoles per liter of the water this is osmolarity and if i say listen if i say that my body fluids have 300 milli osmol per kilogram of water i'm talking about osmolality for practical purposes water can be measured in liter as well as kilograms and 1 liter of the water is equal to 1 kilogram of water 1 liter of water is practically equal to 1 kilogram of water so for practically in our body osmolarity and osmolality is same am i clear for example we say so much sodium is added to 1 liter of the water 
so much sodium chloride is added to one liter of the water that osmotic power is 300 milliosmol per liter. If we are talking per liter of water, it is osmolarity. But if I say so much sodium chloride is added to one kilogram of water, one kilogram of water, we have added so much sodium chloride that now osmotic power is 300 milliosmol. But because it is per kilogram, then we will say this is water osmolality. In our body, in medical term, doctors have decided to measure the things per liter. So we use the term osmolarity. Is that right? Am I clear? So this was something about osmolarity and I already have told you normal osmolarity of the body fluid is to be very specific it is about to 90 milliosmol per liter. But for a generalization we use the term 300 milliosmol per liter. Am I clear? Then the third term which I want to clear is what is the concept of steady state in steady state. The steady state between the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. Steady state is a situation in which an equilibrium is achieved between the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid in such a way that there is no net movement of the water. It means in steady state osmolarity of extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid will be equal. Normally in every person extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid are present in steady state. In steady state what happens osmolarity of extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid is equal and there is no net movement of the fluid. But of course when there is some physiological disturbance right then osmolarity may change osmolarity of extracellular fluid may change in some physiological disturbance when osmolarity changes in extracellular fluid the fluid shift occur between the two compartment to achieve a new steady state for example if osmolarity is normally here 300 but if it become 270 then fluid from will start shifting from extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid until both of them achieve a new steady state at a new osmolar level. Is that right? Or if osmolarity due to some physiological change, osmolarity of extracellular fluid becomes 330, then fluid will start moving from intracellular to extracellular to achieve a new steady state until again osmolarity becomes equal on both side and net movement of the fluid stop. Am I clear? So normally our body fluid both compartment are in steady state, steady state means two things. Number one osmolarity on both sides should be equal and there should be no net movement. But when there is some physiological disturbance and osmolarity changes in extracellular fluid, body come out of steady state, fluid starts shifting across the compartment until a new steady state is achieved in which again osmolarity in the extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid become equal and with the new volumes adjusted. Third thing, a common term is used in medical literature volume contraction or volume expansion, volume contraction and volume yes expansion. Now this is very important to understand it clearly. When I say in my patient there is volume contraction, I am referring to the volume of extracellular fluid. For example in some physiological disturbance, extracellular fluid volume increases, right? When its volume increases, I say there is volume, what is this? I use the term volume expansion. Actually I should use the term extracellular volume expansion. But in medical literature commonly when we say there is volume expansion it means we are referring to expansion in the volume of extracellular fluid. This term may not include what is happening to intracellular fluid. Then if I use the term volume expansion the volume is increasing 
I'm referring only to extracellular fluid volume. If I say there's volume contraction, again I'm referring only to the extracellular fluid volume. It's a bit, uh, you can say, unfair with the intracellular fluid because sometimes what happens, extracellular volume expanded and intracellular shrink. But the term will be used only the patient has a what volume expansion is that right so whatever changes occur in both these of compartment in medical literature we use in term of extracellular fluid if i say that my patient has volume expansion which volume is expanding extracellular if i say my patient has volume contraction which volume is contracting extracellular whatever happened to intracellular we are not referring it's unfair but this is like practical life right then we come to another term that we are talking about osmo osmo larity there are three terms we use normal osmolar normal osmolar all osmolar hyposmolar and hyperosmolar or when there is hyposmolar, we also call it hypotonic. Hypotonic. And if there is hyperosmolar, we can also use hypertonic. Now, let me make a diagram here and explain what is meant by these terms. If I say my patient have hyperosmolar situation, I say my patient has hyperosmolar situation. I'm talking about osmolarity of extracellular fluid. If, it's, if I say my patient is normal osmolar, I'm talking about again osmolarity of extracellular fluid. If I say my patient is hyposmolar, I'm talking about osmolarity of extracellular fluid. So actually, when we are using the term of normal osmolar or hyposmolar or hyperosmolar, these terms are referring to Osmolarity changes in extracellular fluid. In extracellular fluid, is osmolarity remain at this level, it is normal osmolar. If osmolarity goes up, this is hyperosmolar. If osmolarity goes down, this is hypoosmolar. Is that right? Now let me tell you. If I tell you that my patient has hyperosmotic or hypertonic volume expansion. Look, I am writing a situation here, star number 1. My patient has hyper osmolar volume expansion. What this term mean? That my patient has extracellular fluid in which osmolarity is more than normal and volume is more than normal. Is that right? If I write another term, that my patient has hypo osmolar or hypotonic volume expansion. What does it mean? Again, both terms are referring to extracellular fluid. That my patient has what? Hyposmolar, high, less osmolarity of extracellular fluid and volume expansion of the extracellular fluid. Am I clear? No problem into these terms, right? Now, if I say my patient has isotonic or isosmolar volume expansion. What does it mean? Osmolality, osmolarity of extracellular fluid is normal, but volume has been expanded. So it means if extracellular fluid has volume expansion, we will draw it like this. Is that right? It has volume expansion. If extracellular fluid has volume expansion, this may be isosmolar volume expansion, isotonic volume expansion or it may be hypertonic volume expansion or it may be hypotonic volume expansion. If this is the change, okay, let me make it more clear to you people. This is the standard, right? If I say that my patient has volume expansion like this, what is it? Isotonic volume expansion. If I say my patient has like this, what is it? 
hypertonic volume expansion if i say my patient has hypotonic volume expansion am i clear these terms are really clear to you and of course there can be other situations also let me draw another diagram now you will tell me in in my patient extra cellular compartment has become like this what is it hyposmolar volume contraction if i say that my patient is like this isotonic volume contraction and if i say that my patient is like this what is it hypertonic volume contraction so volume contraction may be volume look from this side volume has come here so all of these cases are volume contractions right but this is hypotonic volume contraction this is isotonic and this is hypertonic am i really clear right let's have a break